Hello boys and girls, and people of other genders. I am building a computer today with these parts here you see in front of you. All this is going to go inside of this, and uh, I'm going to go over each and every one of them with you and tell you a little bit about them and uh, why I chose them. So this here is the Corsair 600T mid-tower case. A few of the things on here is really nice. You got your side panel with obviously a side view window so you can see all your awesome parts inside there. Pull these things down, it opens right up real easy. You can uh, make changes to your computer real easy with that. Uh, it's got several hard drive bays and they're compatible with pretty much every size hard drive. They slide in and out real easy as you can see here. Slides in, slides out, simple. You can put your solid state hard drive without an adapter on there. Uh, which is a two and a half inch drive basically. Um, it's got several uh, uh, dust filters and there's one on the bottom which is inside here and you pull it out right from the back. That's the dust filter for the power supply and then you got a front dust filter here and that just basically comes out like that. Uh, it's got an LED fan up front here. I believe it's a 200 millimeter um, and on the top you also have another 200 millimeter LED lit up fan and that's actually controlled on the top here by a fan speed controller so if you want to make your case a little bit quieter with the fans you can do that and uh, it has very good cable management and on the other side of this case here you pop this panel off just like this and you run your wires behind here to make your case look nice and clean keep them out of the way keep airflow good the top part here this is also a pretty cool feature. This pops right off. And what this is good for is you put your fans right up the top here. You can upgrade to water cooling, which is what I did. Both your fans get mounted right to the top there. And inside there, then you have your radiator and the fans hide away on the top, which is, which is actually really, really nice. I really like that design. And, uh, Instead of having a radiator fan set up sitting on top of your computer, you kind of have it built in. So that makes it very nice. Here we have a Corsair TX850 version 2 Enthusiast Series ATX power supply. It's 80 plus bronze, single 12 volt rail. It's got all your basic connectors on here for your power, except this one has two PCI Express 8 pin. Uh, unlike some older uh, versions of power supplies which have six pins. Uh, 850 watt, as you can see, it's good for uh, most of your basic builds uh, and some SLI configurations. Sometimes you have to go with a higher wattage. But in my case, I'm not doing SLI and my GPU itself requires 650 watt minimal. So 850 watt is a good range of wattage to have. And we're going on to the next part. This is the Corsair H100. It's basically an all-in-one liquid CPU cooler kit. You got the heat sink right here and the pump is built right into it. And then you have your radiator which is a 240 millimeter and then two 140 millimeter fans. And they plug right into the heat sink itself and that adjusts the fans automatically. Or you can use a button on the front here which has low, medium, and high settings. Uh, which is actually, those are presets. So. Um, they can go faster if you need them to, or slower. And this is mainly for overclocking, so it will give you very comfortable temperatures when you overclock quite a bit. That's mainly why I got this. This here is 16 gigabytes of RAM, made by G-Skill, it's a Ripjaw series. It's DDR3 PC17000, so it's 2133 megahertz. And there's not much more to say about that. The reason I chose these is because I do video editing and uh, photo editing, so more RAM is better for me. This is the Intel Core i7 Quad Core Series 3 processor. The model is 3770K, which means it's a 22 nanometer version. It's got something very neat in it called the iGPU. You got a graphics processing unit right inside the processor itself. So you actually don't even need to have a graphics card in your computer to get uh, high definition graphics out of it. However, I recommend using a graphics card, but this has a building which is kind of nice. 
It's got four cores in it, but that actually acts as eight logical cores. It's got turbo boost technology for overclocking and hyperthreading technology, and that's something they had out years ago. But it, they still have it on this, so it's kind of nice. It's LGA socket 1155, just so you know. And I chose this because it is pretty much the average processor that everybody chooses who is building a computer. This mother effer right here is the GeForce GTX 690. It's PCI Express 3.0, and the 3.0 is actually ran by the processor I just showed you, uh, which is the processor actually, by the way, is the Ivy Bridge, and the Ivy Bridge series is actually what has the PCI Express 3.0 specialty to it. So um, I'm not even going to get into why I bought this because it's not even necessary. It's a damn awesome card. Yes, it's expensive. And some of you who probably can't afford something like this are probably drooling over it right now. I'm not going to be drooling over it because I don't want to ruin it. This is the Crucial M4 solid state hard drive. It's a 256 gigabyte version and it's stated 3.0, so it's 6, 6 gigabyte per second transfer rate. And the read and write times of this, without getting into exact numbers, is around four or five hundred megabytes per second. That's very fast. And that is why I chose this hard drive. This will outperform hard drives even in RAID configuration. Even if you had two 10,000 RPM hard drives in RAID configuration, this will outperform them by itself. I recommend using solid state hard drives. Some people might be against it because they're expensive. However, they're coming down in price. So, get a solid state hard drive for your computer and you will be impressed with the improvement that it makes. Because as of right now, you may have a great computer, but your bottleneck will be your hard drive. So, solid state. Now this is the Asus P8Z77V Pro series. It's a motherboard that basically ties in all the parts I just showed you. Uh, it's got some really cool features on here, but I'm not going to get into all of them because there are so many of them. But it's got some very nice stuff on it. You got DTS uh, audio output, which is optical out right on the motherboard, HDMI out. Um, you know, obviously you can do SLI configurations. It's got the um, SATA 6 gigabit per second transfer right on here, which is obviously SATA 3.0. Um, it's got digital power control. Not a huge deal. So the first thing you're going to be doing is taking the back plate that came with your motherboard and you're going to be popping that in the case. That's probably one of the easiest things you can do to build a computer is popping in this. Alright, so now that I've got the case laying down, I'm just going to put the motherboard in place. Uh, it's laying on its side. This is That's the way that you kind of have to do it. The standoffs are already installed in this case, so I don't have to do that, which are basically just the, the screws that you screw into this, the back of the case, and that basically supports the motherboard. I'm just going to pop this in place, and you're just going to push it against the back plate and then screw it in place. All right, so the next thing I'm going to be doing after I've got my motherboard all screwed down is I'm going to put the processor in the processor socket which is this little thing right here. I got my processor right here and I'm going to place it right in the socket. And now it's in the socket and uh, you pretty much just drop it in place but gently. So then you close the cover then you close the cover just by pushing this down and that seats it in place. So now that I've got my processor and my motherboard installed, I'm going to go ahead and install this power supply and run my wires to the various places that uh, they will need to go. So now that I've got my power supply mounted at the bottom, it's screwed in place. So this is my 24-pin connector for the motherboard. And then, of course, up here I have my 8-pin ATX connector for the motherboard. And now that I've got my motherboard connected here from the power supply, uh, on both parts. I'm going to go ahead and remove this 200 millimeter LED fan so I can install my radiator. Um, and then the next step I'll be installing the RAM sticks and that's kind of why I'm going to remove this now because I don't, want, I don't want anything else to be in the way of installing the radiator. Even though there's plenty of room here, it's just easier. Now that I've gotten my uh, radiator and fan set up here, uh, I'm going to go ahead and install my CPU heatsink. So installing the CPU cooler uh, comes with a back plate which is this bad boy right here. 
and uh, it's it's pretty simple. There's nothing really to it. You, you pretty much just slap it into place. Okay, I've got my backplate installed for my CPU heatsink, and this is kind of what the bottom of the uh, CPU heatsink looks like. It's already got the thermal paste on it, so you don't have to worry about applying your own. Most importantly, when you are putting a processor heatsink in place, you want to put it down once and you don't want to pull it back off. You want to put it down and hold it in place because if you pull it back off and try to put it back down, you're going to create air pockets in the thermal compound and you're not going to be able to cool your processor. And that, believe it or not, could result in overheating. And now I'm going to install the RAM sticks. These only go in one direction. Um, it's pretty self-explanatory. And what I usually like to do is open up the one side that needs to be open for all those on the clips. Um, and then you're just going to push it in place. So you're going to put it in here like that, and then you're going to push it right in place. Now sometimes it takes a little bit of pressure, and you'll, you'll feel it click into place, but if you didn't feel it move, it's not in place. So sometimes you got to push more, put more pressure on that. Okay, as you can see, I've got my four RAM sticks in place. And just like I said, uh, it does take pressure. There's the little levers on the one side should start to move. And some other boards, they'll click in place. Other ones, they may just go next to it. And then you got to click it in place yourself. All right, so now the next step I'm going to do here is um, just taking these power cables. I'm just going to route these through the back. As of right now, I'm going to take my hard drive. And that's going to go inside of this slot here and then it's just going to screw right in there like so. I got my uh, DVD burner here. This is just a standard DVD burner, nothing too special. It's real simple to install and all I'm doing is I've, I've pre-put it in place here and uh, after I've taken out the uh, front cover for the case and you're just going to push it into place like this. And that's pretty much it. I over pushed it but whatever. There are various cables here uh, that are front panel connectors, which is basically your hard drive activity light, your uh, audio for your uh, headphones and microphone, and then you get your USB ports. So all these here are going to be plugged into various places here on the motherboard. So installing the graphics card, this being a very, very large one as you can see, you're going to put it in here, it's going to go in the first slot. That's going to be your um, PCI Express 16X lane. As you can see here, I have my graphics cards installed. I've got my two PCI Express 8-pin connectors connected to that. And this is screwed in place. Uh, that's pretty much it. So I'm going to turn this on for the first time. And hopefully it works. Alright, so I'm actually in the BIOS here. But this BIOS screen is very easy to look at. Um, I mean, it's almost like looking at, uh, you know, a, a, a Windows screen, like a like a desktop almost, which is amazing that you can actually use a mouse in the BIOS. So I just wanted to show the wiring. This is actually the cable management behind the motherboard on the other side of the uh, case here. That's what that looks like, and it's real simple to close this panel on the 600T. It pretty much just goes like this and then it clicks into place. All right, so computer's done, it's finished as you can see. Uh, looks good, works great, and I uh, can't wait to get into some gaming here to see what this thing can really do, and then hopefully some improved video editing over my last computer, and uh, that way I can get my porn business started. And I uh, hope you guys have fun building your own computer. It's a lot of fun. I know it's just an introductory video, there's not a whole lot of detail in it, but it's just to kind of get you, in, you know, adjusted to it uh, if you've never done it before. So, hope you guys liked it. Subscribe or don't. I don't really give a crap. And uh, we'll see you later.